Hey gang, welcome back to New Rockstars. I'm Sam Basher, and let's talk about that mind-blowing episode of The Flash last night. Literally, mind-blowing. Look at this. Mmm, gross, his head was peeled back. Episode 407, Therefore I Am. Oh boy, we got a solid idea of just how scary smart people can be. Can't wait to see the thinker in future episodes, but I'm getting off topic. Let's talk about the biggest Easter eggs and the most delightful comic book references from this episode. Here's a quick spoiler warning for the Flash TV show, past, present, future episodes, comics, movies, etc. Let's get going. Starting at the top of this episode with number 10, the thinking cap. If you wouldn't mind throwing up a clip of the thinker with that magical cap, will you please, kind editor? Bat, bad boy is the classic throwback to the original thinker, which is still Clifford DeVoe, but before he got his noggin scooped off picture again, Thank you so much. Unlike the show's version of the thinking cap, which can just boost Cliff's intellect, the original cap could control people's minds and give the wearer some form of telekinesis. Could these powers show up on the Flash? Possibly. Mm hmm. What else could that floating chair do, I wonder? I got some hints later in the episode, but uh, stay tuned. Speaking of the thinker and his chair, number nine on the list is a quick rundown of all the connections this episode had to season one, specifically the pilot, but here we go. I know we all miss the magic that was the first season of this show, and the writers wanted to remind you that they heard you, and they're doing their best. All right, they're trying. Take for example, right off the bat, our main villain is in a wheelchair due to the particle accelerator explosion, much like Harrison Wells in season one, how he used a wheelchair as a way to seem non-threatening, you know, like to kind of get people to stop looking at him. Maybe don't look at my evil stuff I'm doing, you know what I mean? We even see the original Harrison Wells from season one. Oh boy, do I miss just how creepy he was. There's a special type of creepy. That's hard to do, kids. Another throwback is the rain floating up, much like in season one, whenever the reverse flash would show up, or when dark matter was present, liquids in rooms would start to float up. <gasps> so cool. And much like the reverse Flash in season one, the Thinker has been secretly spying on Team Flash, both through the samurai helmet and through hidden cameras in his own home, catching Barry doing some B and E, breaking and entering bacon and eggs, my favorite food. And finally, we see the return of the classic board of clues in Barry's office, where he's investigating Devo, much like he created in season one, the one that you know the board had all the hints to who killed his mom. He didn't know. You know what? This got me thinking. And I gotta rewatch the first season because I miss season one Barry. I miss season one Flash. Moving on to number eight on the list, check out this sick shout out to the MCU. My Spidey sense is just tingling way off the charts. Ooh, baby, that reference is obviously referring to Marvel's Spider-Man's trademark ability, his spider sense. The wall crawler's sixth sense. This usually helps Peter Parker sense danger when it's near, which makes sense in this scene since Barry's getting a weird vibe from DeVoe. Love these Marvel shout outs. First, the Incredible Hulk, and now Spidey. I'm guessing Marvel comics might exist in this universe. Could be cool. But you know what else is cool, famous unsolved mathematical questions. Yes, yay! This is number seven on our list. Listen to all the mathematical tidbits that come flying out of the thinker's mouth. So do what? Riemann's hypothesis. Hilbert's 15th problem. Ryman's hypothesis and Hilbert's 15th question actually comes from a list of 23, which over half have been claimed to be solved up until now. 15th is still up in the air. We don't know if it's been solved yet, but thanks, Thinker. Again, this is all according to the internet because I am not a mathematician at all. I literally have no idea what any of this means. If you do though, throw down an explanation in the comment section. Explain it like I'm five. Next up on to number six on this list, sticking with the scene of the Thinker being a know-it-all, he mentions a famous mysterious murderer. Who, who was Jack the Ripper? I only bring this up because this actually ties back to another DCCW show. Yay! Two weeks back, the Legends of Tomorrow thought they were tracking down Jack the Ripper, but of course it turned out to be a vampire, but actually fake out turned out to be an evil, time-traveling, recently resurrected magical supervillain. Classic. Number five on the list brings us back to the Thinker, whose origin I really enjoyed in this episode. When the Thinker mentions what is happening to his body, My mind is drawing energy from my body. I immediately felt like this was a throwback to one of DC's most famous villains who actually has already been on the big screen. <gasps> who is it? Remember way back when during the Green Lantern film, Peter Sarsgaard played the one and only Hector Hammond? Me neither. <laughs> No, that movie is painful to watch. But fun fact, about Hector Hammond in the comics, his brain starts to become more and more powerful, making his intelligence skyrocket and grants him supernatural abilities. But unfortunately, this gift takes away his mobility and eventually his ability to speak. Don't worry, he's got telepathy. He doesn't need to use his mouth anymore. This definitely feels like there's a connection between these two brainy villains, but let me know what you guys think. Next up with number four, listen to what Captain Singh says during this scene with Barry and the mechanic. Use your time away to consider your future in law enforcement. 
other jobs could the Flash have? Well, I know there's probably numerous in the comics, even one time in the New 52 when he was a bartender for a second, but I actually think this is a nod to the recently released Justice League film, which I very much enjoyed. Our cinematic Barry Allen is a busy bee, not at the CCPD crime lab, however, but at three other jobs. What could they be? By the way, if they do do a Flashpoint movie, I really hope we get a glimpse of Grant Gustin in the time stream somewhere. Come on, throw that leather suit in there, please. Number three, here's a fun music cue that perfectly describes Barry's attitude during this episode. No Here in spirit, some of the words go like this, no compromise, but willing to sacrifice, believe what you want. Sure, Barry did go a little over the top when he was investigating DeVoe, kind of broke into his house. But if we know Barry, he sometimes never compromises until the end of the episode when he softens up a little bit and changes his tune. Actually, this song could apply to most superheroes, but let's not get into that just this second, because we've got a big Easter egg that should have been mentioned earlier, but I was waiting for the right time, all right? Let's talk about the thinker's chair. Let's take a look. Sure, this chair has been in many episodes before this one, flying around shooting stuff, helping him think, classic. And I had a feeling of what this chair was inspired to look like, and many of you guys have pointed this out, but I think we can finally say this chair feels an awful lot like the new god Metron's chair. Metron's chair, or the Mobius chair, is very much the same design-wise as the thinker's floating chair on the show. It even plugs into the person sitting on the chair, allowing them to access unlimited information. The comic version of the chair isn't so literal, though, with the whole plugging in. <laughs> Only difference here is that the comic book version can teleport and time travel sometimes, who knows? Maybe we'll see that happen in future episodes? Maybe, this is a weird season after all. Don't worry, it keeps getting weirder and that brings us to number one on the list. One of the biggest Easter eggs ever that Team Flash just kinda throws away like it's nothing. This is huge, listen to what Wally says when he finally returns. Self-reflection and the battle with a starfish from outer space huh. gives you perspective. A Starfish from outer space. It's not nothing. Wally just confirmed that Starro is in the Arrowverse. Starro is this gigantic alien starfish that can control people's minds, starts to take over the world. You know, classic. And the Flash has gone up against Starro many times in the comics. Fun fact, Starro has already appeared on another DC TV show. Remember the pilot for NBC's Powerless? Me neither. But if you look right here, Starro is climbing a build and then he goes, Pfft. So cool. And lastly, here are a few honorable mentions. I just wanted to point out that when Barry puts on a hoodie, he becomes Hoodie Allen. And secondly, the Japanese phrase that the thinker uses translates to, yes, I only use it during slash for academic conferences. Boo, boring. I wanted that to translate to something nefarious. Shout out to Raina Scully for helping me translate that. Anyway though, thank you guys so much for checking out this video. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. What do you think enlightenment could be? Do you think that the thinker is planning on using the speed force to help extend his life, maybe? Let us know your theories down below. Be sure to like this video share it with your friends, and subscribe to New Rockstars for more breakdowns. We've got a bunch in the channel you're missing out if you're not watching every single one of them. Make sure you hit me up on Twitter if you have more questions at Sam Basher, that's my handle. And I'll see you guys next time.